Hey everybody, in this video I want to show you guys a bunch of different ways to sabotage the Xbox. Uh, there are a lot of ground things to go over, uh, ground rules before we start. Uh, you don't need every tool that I'm going to show you in the tutorial. You only need certain things for certain sabotage methods. Um, I am going to be switching between software and hardware. Um, during the, the first section of this video because the easiest to correct uh, or easiest to accomplish would be software and other than that um, all the other rules are just going to come along uh, as I go. I'm going to be working over um, three different methods. Uh, I've called method number one a software error, uh, either simple or hard, it's all the same once, once there's an error there. Uh, simple hardware error and or replacement, which basically means we're going to remove something or corrupt uh, a piece of hardware. That way uh, they'd either have to replace it or uh, fix it in order to get it to work again. And then the next way is silent death, which basically means everything in here as a whole uh, is basically done and done. And then there's no, there's no getting it back afterwards. There's no fixing it. And pretty much each piece is uh, connected and linked to this motherboard specifically, so there is no salvaging uh, what's on this uh, once it's done, other than uh, pretty much the the head chip in the in the DVD player and other individual hardware parts, which no one really knows how to use. So so screw that. And um, yeah, so the reason I've called this the cubic method is because I'm showing you three different levels of sabotage. Uh, it, within each level I'll show you three different methods and within each method I'll show you why it works what the piece that we're sabotaging is supposed to accomplish before we sabotage it and afterwards if there is a way to fix it I will show you how to fix it so um, yeah I guess that's the intro done and uh, let's get over to the software so see you there Hey there guys, uh, now that we're doing the software section of this tutorial, uh, I'm going to first show you what programs you're going to need, and then I'll show you how to extract the files and everything like that, and how to corrupt them once, you'll, uh, once you've extracted them. I'm going to show you three different methods, uh, three different ways to fix these methods once, uh, once you've actually accomplished the corruption, and uh, what these are supposed to do uh, before before you corrupt them. So uh, with that being said, let's get started. The download links for the programs that I'm about to show you uh, are going to be in the description. Uh, you're only going to really need a few different programs, specifically Horizon and if you want to fix the corruption once it's done, lay fluffy, and if you don't then you're only going to need something like Hex Editor. Uh, I'll put the download link or some type of uh, link indicating the name of these in the description. And now uh, this is the part where you're going to need to move all of your files over from the Xbox onto a flash drive or use a data transfer cable, otherwise known as a DTC, uh, to get the files on your computer. Now. I'm not going to show you guys how to do that in this video because I have another video on it and I don't feel like uh, redoing that. But um, yeah, so I'll show you once you have it all on a flash drive what to do from there. So now we're going to be plugging the flash drive into the computer from the Xbox with all the format and files already included on it. Uh, now that it's in, we're going to get this little error message that says that it's not compatible because it can't read the formatting. Uh, just go ahead and dismiss that, it doesn't matter. After you've downloaded those programs that I've provided the download links for in the description, uh, we can go ahead and open Horizon, or Horizon 360 as some people call it, uh, and go to either Profiles or Games. The first method I'm going to show you is how to corrupt a profile. This is um, fixable by re-downloading the profile from Xbox Live Server uh, via the um, Windows Live ID and password so yeah um, so now we can go ahead and extract this by right clicking and click extract and go ahead and put it on the desktop now there are multiple like and by multiple I mean millions 
of ways of corrupting data. It's if you do one thing wrong when you're trying to do something right, that'll corrupt it as well. You don't actually have to be trying to do this. So, so uh, it should be pretty simple. So now we just go ahead and put this in like fluffy, or I'm sorry, not like fluffy. Uh, we go ahead and put this in X, uh, hex editor, which I'll provide the download link for that as well. And now we see the basic encryption of the actual profile itself. Now one thing you could do is open this up in uh, in a couple of different programs and edit the gamer tag, but that would be noticeable. So what we want to do is basically uh, corrupt this data. We want to put a 4 here and a 3 or a 6 here and a 2 here. Now all this does is makes this uh, profile ID here incompatible with the rest of the file. As soon as the script runs and hits this point in the script, it will stop and uh, cause an error. So now uh, you can go ahead and go into the actual hexadecimal code itself and just start typing in numbers. You know, just feel free to do whatever the hell you want. And then come over here to the text section and say uh, all caps fuck you for being a douche. Now the chances of them actually being able to open this up in a hexadecimal editing program and seeing this are very slim so don't worry and if you're still really afraid of it then just go ahead and you know like leave it where it's at or whatever uh, and just corrupt a few different things they won't be able to read any of it anyways so yep let's go a little bit further down the list about I guess I say about halfway and um, go ahead and back out a big section uh, this way the um, the data entry is uneven and the wrong file size. So now let's go nearly down all the way to the bottom. Just to make sure we have it, we're going to edit the actual GPD files included in the um, profile itself. The GPD files hold all game data progress and um, uh, achievement progress other than uh, the actual game saves themselves. So now we're just going to go ahead and back a big chunk of these out and click save. Now this will automatically create a backup file and we don't need that so this will be the backup file here it says dot back you can just go ahead and delete that and take the original and open up horizon and put this file back now the only way to really fix this at this point would be to go recover it from Xbox Live um, and that if you don't have Xbox Live then there would be no way to fix this so uh, if they don't have Xbox Live, uh, only do this if you really hate them because taking this, re-extracting it, putting it into Lay Fluffy, well that's not Lay Fluffy, uh, I don't know why you always stay on top Horizon, I hate you, and then uh, go to security and hit fix. Uh, this probably would not fix all the internal errors even though it says it does. Uh, if you put this on an Xbox it would not work at this point. It would just say corrupted profile. So we can go ahead and delete that now. And now I'm going to show you how to corrupt a game save. It's basically the same exact way uh, that you would do that. Now, specifically, I'm going to show you how to corrupt a game save so that it freezes an Xbox. Um, and for this game, I'll use, um, I think one of the only games I really have saved on here is Minecraft. All the others are hollow files. Uh, they don't have anything in them. But let's see tutorial so this is a save game uh, based on the tutorial of the game it automatically creates a map and uh, I'm going to show you what things to do to this to corrupt it now you could also open this in hex editor and move a few things around encode stuff and delete things um, that would work perfectly uh, I'm going to show you a bit of a more classy way to do it with another program uh, for this program you're just going to have to go look it up because um, I don't feel like providing that download link as well because it's actually kind of hard to find but you guys can google it I'm sure and you'll be fine so I'm gonna go into others 360 revolution uh, I'm pretty sure you can find this at a uh, like what is it XP game saves or something like that dot com and um, it runs really well it's a real nice program it rehash and resigns everything as it goes and uh, yeah, so Minecraft's a pretty popular game, so if you want to fuck with their Minecraft uh, game, go ahead. All you have to do is now drag and drop this extracted save file into the Horizon, or uh, sorry, Revolution window. 
and go ahead and click mod file and now it'll open up the inventory editor which uh, does take a minute for me to load because I have so many people in that game that it, it stores all of their items in their inventories uh, within the save file. But once it loads, we'll be, we'll be good to go. So here we go. Now it's loaded, and we can drop down this list. Uh, just a few things that will corrupt data in this game are, um, let's see, stationary water. You can do stationary lava, but not stationary water. Um, where are you? Um, there you are. Another thing is a cube of air. So if we were to scroll all the way up to the top and click air, and then all we have to do is click file and save, and it will automatically rehash and resign this, and then we just click exit, and we can exit out of this program again, and then we open up Horizon or Horizon 360, drag and drop it in here and follow the same process. Um, as the last one and that would that would corrupt the game save and every time they tried to play it it would freeze their Xbox or they would have to dashboard and they wouldn't know what the error was uh, unless they also opened it in an editor and then again if you edit it uh, hexadecimally then they wouldn't be able to open it in the editor uh, to see what you've added so it would be corrupted beyond comprehension and it would be unencrypt or uh, undecryptable and then uh, they wouldn't be able to rehash and resign it or anything like that. So for you guys that don't know what I just said, don't worry about it. Their shit's going to be fucked. That's all you need to know. So you're good to go. And now the third and final way that I'm going to show you to corrupt data on the Xbox is by by editing their profile altogether. Um, what we're not going to do is actually corrupt it, though. What we're going to do... Uh, since Microsoft has raised the security level on Xbox Live, what we're just going to do is unlock every single achievement they've ever gotten in their lives, and then uh, and the ones they haven't, and then uh, go ahead, save, rehash, and resign it. Uh, for this, you will need to plug it back into the Xbox and sign into it and let it load. If you don't, um, and this is a perfect way to corrupt their data and, and have them not know what's wrong with it, it says that they have a lot of gamer score at first, granted. But then when they start playing a game or try and edit their profile or their avatar or start Netflix, anything like that, it doesn't have any settings saved to the file itself. So, uh, especially if you don't rehash and resign it. So, I'll show you how to do that and tell you about it as we go. So, again, we're going to take the profile and extract it to the desktop. And now that it is on the desktop, we can drag and drop it into Lay Fluffy once again. Um, and yeah, minimize this crappy program. So as you can see, I don't use Horizon for anything except extraction and insertion. I really don't like it. I don't respect it. And I don't trust it. Uh, so anyways, we're going to go over to the Profile tab. And go ahead and click Unlock All on the Achievements list. Now, as you can see, this guy is going to end up with, um, or actually, no, I've already unlocked all his achievements, sorry. But uh, without hitting rehash and resign, you could make it anonymous, that would work as well, and then save account. And making it anonymous would mean that all of the uh, profile IDs on the external part wouldn't work and it would be corrupted again. But if you do rehash and resign it and don't make it anonymous, what will happen is, Whenever they start a game or try and save something, it won't save because it won't know what profile to uh, associate that game save with. So if they play with their uh, look inversion on, then it won't be inverted. They won't be able to play because when they push up, it'll go up as opposed to down. Uh, if they play with the X inverted, that, that will be gone as well. Uh, all Everything will be set to default. Look sensitivity will not be high at all. Uh, or anything like that now uh, so yeah and to fix that all you would do is re-recover the profile online uh, and if you made it anonymous and anything you do to the profile can be fixed by recovering it online so don't worry about that uh, the only thing that's really permanent is the game save mods or corruption I suppose and uh, yeah that's about it so um, so now let's move on to hardware and tools uh, I'll see you guys when I set up the external camera hey everybody uh, welcome to part two 
Uh, for some reason, my video encoder has been having some issues, so I'm going to try this new one that I got and uh, see if it works any better. Hopefully it does, and if it doesn't, then I'll have to separate the clips up into little pieces uh, less than about five minutes each because it's just being a real dick. So, anyways, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, show you how to modify or, I guess, more uh, rather... Uh, corrupt and um, damage the hardware in such a way that it is or is not recoverable. I am going to show you how it works originally, what it's supposed to do, how to break it, how to fix it. So um, yeah, and I'll start by showing you the easy uh, hardware error and replacements, and then I'll show you the um, uh, the the more in depth. Uh, kill it ones. Now, if you want to do this without taking the case off, you can. Uh, just go ahead and go all the way to the end. The last way I'm going to show you is going to be the way to do it with no case. So I'll, um, I'm not actually going to provide a, a link to the time on that. You can just find it because I've already made this fucking video four times and it keeps corrupting itself. So yeah, obviously it doesn't want me making this. So um, with that being said, let's get started. Um, the first way is to create an E72 error. This is easy, easy, easy. Um, once you get the case off, and you can look this up in another video, they got hundreds of tutorials on this. Uh, the only thing I'd be careful of taking the case off is here in the back, the clamps that run along here that keep the bottom and, or sorry, top and bottom together, uh, they were not meant to come apart. So make sure you do that carefully. Uh, but if you do happen to snap something, just go ahead and hot glue it, and I doubt anyone's going to notice. So it won't it won't fall apart on you. Um, yeah. So now we're going to work on that E72. Now, if you just kind of grab your uh, CD or sorry DVD drive and lift on it, lift it up, then you can lift out the um, this fan cover here. Um, and I'll be talking more about this fan cover here in a minute. So don't worry. Um, basically, uh, you're going to see these two fans in the back here that are um, connected to the fan cover uh, indirectly. And what it does is it blows air from the back here through the, uh, through the platelets on the heat sink, uh, which carries heat away from the central and general processing units. And then it flows up and out of the Xbox around the edges and shit. Uh, honestly, I think that was a bad design. They should have made it um, definitely have something other than a frickin' plate right here in the front. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that, but I hope so. And, um, yeah, so, anyways, uh, now that we have this uncovered, you can see these, uh, I don't know, can you see those? Yeah. Uh, there's red, blue, brown, and black wires right here uh, next to your uh, fan. If you just kind of pull on these, just a tad, they come right out. And then you have, if I can show it to you, you have this little white piece left. Uh, just let that go, it doesn't matter. Uh, basically what that's going to do is it's going to cause the heat from the general and central processing units to flow up through these heat sinks and not be carried away. So this bitch is going to get hot and fast. Uh, it's amazing how much these two little fans actually do cool this off, even with this terrible design that Microsoft came up with. So. Um, yeah, uh, so now that that's done, you can go ahead and case it back up if you want to, or continue the video and cause multiple errors so that they just shit their pants, um, and they never get it working again. But basically, this will cause an E72, and if they continue to run the Xbox with an E72, uh, like they won't be able to play any games with it, uh, because it'll just keep overheating and shutting down. But this will either lead to an E74, which means your general processing unit has overheated and fried, uh, or um, it will short something out. And uh, nothing bad will come of that. It just it just won't work anymore. So don't worry. Um, and yeah, so the next way I'm going to show you is to disable the DVD drive. This is simple and easy, and it has an easy fix. The DVD drive is where the games go, and uh, obviously you know that. And then here is where the data comes out of this white one here. Uh, the data flows in and out of this uh, DVD drive telling it what types of DVDs and everything to accept, what uh, what game it is flows back out, uh, and it communicates really, really quickly. And it goes to your TV and makes you have a fun game of whatever. So all you have to do to make it quit playing games is unplug that. 
and there you go, you're done. Now, uh, you wouldn't be able to tell by uh, without going into the Xbox, which also voids the warranty. So once you break it in this way, you could go ahead and um, later on do the, the silent kill um, of the Xbox, and then they wouldn't be able to send it in for a warranty removal or whatever because um, because their their warranty is void now. Uh, even It's even void by you opening it, but if they don't know, then then they wouldn't say that they've opened it before. Uh, another way to get this not to work is by removing the power cord. Um, so that will basically stop it from opening and closing or putting a CD in there. Uh, then they would know that it was this this DVD player that was the or DVD drive that was the problem as opposed to something else. At least with the with the software or information cable, uh, then they would think that it could be a motherboard issue as well. Uh, but all you have to do is basically unplug this one as well. Uh, this is a bit harder to unplug because it's like in there kind of solid. Um, but yeah, still, you can just rip it out. And there you go. Now that we have this undone, I'll show you the third way. The third way is to... Um, let me get this out of the way. Um, whoops. <laughs> anyway, the third way is to unscrew all four of these bolts. Uh, four, or screws, sorry. They, these screws are Phillips heads, so you don't need anything special for once to open this. Uh, there's one here, 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 and here. That's all you're going to need. Uh, once you unscrew those, you can just pretty much put your fingers right here and lift straight up. And uh, this should slide off uh, nice and easy. And um, you should be able to get into there um, real well now. So then you'll see the actual motherboard itself inside of here, or the data chip. And then you can unplug the cables and power cables and everything like that, and then screw it back on. That way, it still won't read, and it might not open, uh, depending on which cables you unplug. It might not do anything if you unplug them all. And uh, if it's a Toshiba Samsung, then uh, you can unplug them all. Other than that, I think uh, you got to cut stuff, but that's permanent. Pretty much, unless they know how to solder. So, um, you should be good to go. And then when they open it up, they wouldn't be able to tell by looking at it, but if they went inside of here, they'd be able to tell. And even then, if you actually cut the wires, they would not, um, they would not be able to fix that, but that they would, they would know. So, uh, the best way is probably just to short it out while it's, while it's still on. Just go ahead and place a piece of wire in, in there. And then, um, next time they turn it on, it'll, you know, and there you go. You just tape a piece of wire in there. Fuck okay. it. So, um, but yeah, uh, so that's how you short out the DVD drive. Now we're moving back on to the Xbox. Um, so from there, we'll go on to the silent death of the Xbox. And this will just cause them to start it up. It will run through a startup cycle of about, like, maybe half a round. And then, um, and then it will, will get the red ring. So now to do this, we're going to need to finish disconnecting the fans. Now, this is easy. You just lift up on these two, um, these two sides of this metal plate. And while lifting up, use your free finger or something to push the fans forward. And then just finish popping them out. Pull straight up. And they're out. You can actually use it on a different Xbox now if you wanted to. And, um, yeah. So now uh, we're going to need to flip it over. And if you haven't already taken these uh, eight screws out of the bottom here that actually hold the motherboard to the base of the container. Uh, go ahead and unplug those now. I got so much dust in this thing. That's so weird. <laughs> but um, yeah, just go ahead and unscrew all these and then you can flip it back over and I'll show you how to take the motherboard out safely. Uh, now you take these three screws out here. One, uh, one here, one here, and one here. And then you just take this whole plate and pull it forward uh, just unplug it, and it comes straight out, just like a USB port, only not. I think that's like a, it's like a USB V6 or something like that. It's weird. It's a little fatter than USB, so just put that off to the side. Um, and I guess I'll show you a fourth way to uh, temporarily disconnect them. Um, you could just replace this with one from another Xbox, or preferably a broken Xbox, or you could short this out, and then. Um, then this would be the error, and no one ever expects this to be the error because it's such a simple part, it never breaks. But, you know, again, if you sabotage it, then that would be the reason it was broken. So, and someone drew on mine, I don't, I don't know why, that's weird. But, hey, so, 
Anyways, put that off to the side, and now we can grab it by the heat sink and lift straight up on the front, but kind of keep the back leaning kind of downward, and just slide it out of there. Now, if you torque it, uh, it'll it'll crack, so be careful. And uh, if and don't force anything because it, chances are you left a bolt still screwed in. So if it's bending or whatever, just don't uh, don't let it break and just keep lifting. Um, make sure they're all unscrewed. And now you can just kind of lift it on out of there and put this over to the side. It's useless now. And um, yeah, so now I'm going to show you two ways to kill it uh, completely without uh, or with the case off, and then one way to do it with the case on. So now um, you could corrupt the heat sink, as a matter of fact, by uh, by flipping it over. And uh, basically, what you do is you take these X clamps and a pair of pliers, or specifically needle nose pliers. But since it doesn't matter uh, whether you damage the actual motherboard or not, you just bend these and and they'll snap right off. Um, another way is to overheat this. You could just sit there and point a frickin' um, actually you could just do this like hold it right there and it would melt through it uh, it's made of uh, generally plastic uh, actually and uh, a hair dryer would work um, a soldering iron would work um, if you if it if it had power running through it and again you touched it it would not work anymore so don't worry about that and uh, yeah, so that's the way to get the heat sinks to quit working um, because they'll just be, I don't know why, but those those X clamps, man, they really do a lot of work somehow, some way. And um, there is supposed to be a way to replace them, but I've never got it to work. So um, yeah. And uh, let's see, another way, um, I never showed you all the capacitors, but... Oh well, fuck it. I'll skip that part. Another way is to go up to your ceiling fan and just um, go get you a big wad of dust, man. Like and just just shove it up in these little crevices in here. That that is honestly the most easy way to do something. Dust in an electronic device will will just mess it up so fast. You can't really see it, but there's a tiny little gap there. You could put it under here. Uh, another place you could put it is in here. Uh, or just kind of sprinkle it over the top like a nice little uh, nice little layer of sprinkles on an on a ice cream cone or something. And um, they'll be very happy to see that when they open it up and see just dust laying all over the shit. Um, honestly, that would be one of the best ways. Another way is to um, maybe go up inside these wires here and cut them. And that would cause it to overheat and cause it E74 error. Once it's overheated... If they don't have a spare one of these that they can use immediately, the more they turn it off and back on, the more it's going to fuck it up. So, And, um, of course, they have no warning of this going down. So so they're just pretty much screwed. Uh, and now I'm going to show you how to do it with the case on. My final final piece of the tutorial uh, for today. Those are so cool, those little jelly things. They're like, ugh, but they're cool. So, uh, yeah, to slide this back in, pretty much just lay the back in first like this, and then lower the front down. Um, I got the I got the little hooks caught. Uh, there we go. And then just lay the front down, and it just pops right into place. And then um, you may have to push down on the heat sinks a little bit to get this front piece to slide back in because uh, the motherboard, for some reason, whenever you un un like un tether it to the case and then try and put it back in you have to hold it down uh, for it to go all the way down before you can plug this front piece back in go in there are you aligned right there we go yeah it is okay so um yeah but once that's in that's all you got to do and then you can screw it back in or not it doesn't really matter uh, unless they're going to open it and um yeah so now um, we can work on without this shell. Uh, so basically, this looks like white to you if you still have your cell on. I mean your shell, sorry. And um, you have a, a either a hard drive or a piece of plastic here. You can go ahead and take that piece of plastic off. Now, it's either the external or internal piece of plastic. If it's the external, you just lift it off and throw it away and throw it out the window in front of a car and make them crash, whatever. And... Um, if it is the internal piece, what you're going to need to do is take a narrow uh, piece of metal or wood or plastic or uh, stone if you could get it or 
Um, let's see what a uh, cardboard, um, glass. No, not glass. That'll break, and then you'll cut yourself. Um, leather. Anyways, you take a narrow something, and you push it down in those little holes that are in the side. And they push on clamps on the inside. Now, while you're pushing down on that, you lift up on that internal piece of plastic on the top. Or, um, let's see, would this be the bottom? Um, yeah, the top. And you just kind of pry it off as you go. There's like three or four clamps as you go. And they're on both, whoops, they're on both sides. So, once you get this, uh, this piece of plastic off the top, you'll see these big ass holes here. Once you see these big assholes, um, you can look into them. And what you're looking for mainly is this little processing unit here, this like sub processing unit. Uh, and I'll, I'll give you a look if I can. Um, and these little metal prongs run along the side. They carry information and power through the processing unit or um, data relay, whatever. And um, so. What you have to do is you take your speaker wire and feed it through the hole in the top of the Xbox and connect, I guess you guys can't see that, uh, connect two of those pieces of metal in there. Now normally you'd, you'd aim for one lower than this, closer to the motherboard, but for you know showing you purposes, um, I'm using a high up one and I can see it touching right there. So it, that would actually work. And then you'd hear a little spark and see a little smoke maybe. And then uh, then you'd get Red Ring of Death, and it wouldn't work anymore. Um, then you just uh, you just pop the little top case back in, um, put the hard drive back on if you got one, and then you're done. That's it. Uh, that's if you don't want to take the case off. Otherwise, you have to put it all back together. Um, but, yeah. So, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. That was a long tutorial, and um, I'll see you next time.